I noticed something about YouTube makers. Uh, they have their logo on their stuff. Like spray painted stencil or stickers or whatever. But stickers are for cheaters. Okay, I did make stickers. I'm a hypocrite. But I'm building this Gingri lathe and I want my name cast right into the side of it. Details like that require some forward planning to make sure it's all doable within the limits of sand casting. But I'm not really a forward planning kind of guy. So I'm just gonna stick it right on the very next part that I want to make. That is the feet. Never mind that it's actually impossible to make using any of the techniques I've shown you before, but that's a problem for later. Uh, one of many, as it turns out. For those of you building along, you know the feet are kind of boring, but you gotta have them, right? They go under the thing, they hold it up off the table. Simple, right? Well, I'm changing the pattern. Take a look. All right, here's my pattern. It's a standard Gingri foot. It's a little shorter and a bit thicker, except for this section. I got a cut out here. I'm gonna fill it with this. This is called a loose piece pattern. Cool thing is, uh, this is obviously an undercut because this whole thing is supposed to pull out of the sand. This is just crazy undercut city here. But the white thing can pull out of the sand and leave this in, you know? And then this, which will be stuck in the side of the sand, can pull straight out like this. And there's no undercut. Cool, huh? I want to have my name on this thing somehow, and I wanted to do like fancy casting. I couldn't figure out a way to make the feet like interesting, but not like terrible. So I'm just gonna make it exactly the same, but visually different. Let's do it. It's also longer. It's like, it's, it's five inches long. It's long enough that it goes underneath the entire headstock, just in case, you know, you want to copy it. I'll share the STLs for that somewhere, probably my mini factory. So to ram it up, it's a bit tricky. We got to do something called a false cope. Basically stick the pattern in the top half of the flask, ram it up knowing I'm about to dump all this back out again. Of course, you can always put the insert in there anyway and use it as like a, a practice to get the thing out of the sand because this isn't a normal pattern. The drag, the bottom flask, is where the fun begins. Some of you may notice the spin trap being disconnected from like the runner. There's a reason for that. I 3D model and printed these runner forms, which are admittedly too large for this pattern. Honestly, so far I've only made two sizes of these, too big and too small, and I grabbed the two big ones. Anyway, the spin trap is disconnected because I've realized uh, spin traps can cause some problems. One of them is caused by putting it too close to the pattern. The spin trap being like a big thick chunk of metal can be the last thing to, to harden off and that causes shrinkage so it can try to feed itself by sucking metal out of the part and it's, it's, it's not good. So I figured disconnect it and I can kind of choke the metal down going into it. Or just don't use one. I'm not sure the spin trap itself is like ultra critical. A lot of the time, I don't even use them. I do like this other thing that basically, it serves the same purpose, but it just doesn't have a big hard chunk. I might show that in a future video if you're really interested. Uh, subscribe if you wanna see that, whenever it is I make that video. Probably 2029 at that point, uh, but enough nerd stuff. Okay, once that's rammed, take the top flask out and attempt to remove the pattern carefully. My hands always shake, like terrible. Well, welcome to my world. Cool. Too bad this is a false cope and I gotta smash it now. Smash out the false cope, ram it up again. This time with the tapered sprue in there in the top of the spin trap. I'm not entirely sold on the spin trap, but I firmly believe the tapered sprue matching like the, the cross section of the runners is vital to good castings. I've never had a good casting without something like that to cut down on turbulence. Sorry, did I say no more nerd stuff? Welcome to my world again. The insert is a bit tricky to get out of the sand without screwing up the mold. I suggest fewer than 2,000 milligrams of caffeine that day. That was my mistake, whoops. Another critical component to good casting, in my experience, is the pouring basin. In many ways, it isn't vital, but it makes pouring the metal much easier. You have a big open thing that you can you can pour the metal into, reduces spilling, it, do, it does a couple of cool things. It cuts down a turbulence, it allows bubbles to like float up without going down, and some other stuff that I, I'm not gonna go into because I already promised twice no more nerd stuff this episode. There probably will be though. I formed this basin using a 3D printed mold, and I just used the same sand that I use for everything else, Petrobon. The hole that it forms in there aligns perfectly with the top of the tapered sprue in this size of a flask. I love this system. No idea why people 3D printers don't do more metal casting. It makes it so much easier. Anyways, I would like to define a vocabulary term here that's going to become uh, relevant in a second. It's called a short pour. This is a metal casting oopsie. That means when you go to pour the metal into the mold, you have the molten metal and the mold all made up, you pour it in, you come up short. You don't have enough metal. I melted one four pound Zamic ingot for this. One, ZA12. It's a ZA12 ingot. I got it at Roto Metals, it's the only place to get the stuff. It's great, very nice quality metal. And I thought one giant ingot was enough to fill this mold. Nope, 
I dumped it all in, and the mold just sucked it all up. There was no extra. A little bit of panic set in, uh, and I decided to turn this into an impromptu tilt casting experiment. You'll remember earlier I said the runner was too big. You know, the sprue's too big, the runner's too big, the spin trap's too big. There's going to be a lot of metal sitting in there, right? So I quickly remembered how it was laid out, and while the metal was still molten, I picked it up, tipped the flask on its side. So all of that metal sitting in the runners and the spin trap dumped right into the part. I then started praying heavily and thanking past me for making this flask lock and screw down together. For once, past me didn't screw me over. Sorry that the camera angle doesn't like catch this perfectly or my, the shock on my face, but I wasn't expecting this to happen. Sorry. Incidentally, this basically renders the spin trap useless. The spin trap is supposed to take that initial blast of, of metal that's got some air and some oxides and some sand in it, and it spins around in the trap and then it kind of freezes in place. And the trap is not the part, right? Well, since I dumped the thing up, all the metal in there dumped right back into the part. Okay, for real, I am out of practice. The last couple months I've been busy with like a mix of family stuff and then traveling to see family. I haven't been casting things. I'm gonna officially blame that and not my lack of planning here. Are we all on board with that? Yes? No? Too bad. On well, speaking of traveling, to the guy I met in the plane who recognized me, it was nice to meet you. That does not happen very often. It was very cool. Okay, so I panicked for like a couple hours there, waiting for the thing to cool off. This is where everyone accuses me of like editing tricks and saying I did it again or something. But uh, no, take a look at this thing. I can't believe it either. It came out really nice. Despite the short pour, despite dumping the thing on its side, uh, I also got distracted and I'm pretty sure the metal was overheated. Uh, the part actually looks really good. This is straight from the sand too. No, I did not polish it up. You can see all the sand texture. No, I didn't redo the casting either. You can see the unfilled gating. Look at this. This is the gating that it cut off. There's, there's like no metal left in it. You can see this like the spin trap is all like drained out. This is the foot I cast in the video. Here's why I think it worked. The pouring basin, the gating system, the good quality ZA12, Zamic 12 ingot that I got from Roto Metals, uh, and the way I ran the mold and poured into that pouring basin all worked together to reduce the air and sand entrainment and turbulence when I filled the mold initially. This is why it isn't full of sand and bubbles and junk, even though everything caught in the spin trap just got tipped up and dumped right back into the thing. This is why proper gating is so important. It's so important that even with the suboptimal job I did here, uh, it still came out great. Okay, here's what it looks like after some sandpaper. No polish, just sandpaper to brighten it up and the raised spots. I grinded it a little bit and then I worked up, you know, 100 something, 200 something. I think I ended on like 1200 grit sandpaper, something like that. Check it out. I put the recessed area all the way around so I can use the same foot on either side and face the panel outward if I want. The letters came out really nice. I'm really happy with that. It's extremely difficult to record or photograph anything shiny. It just screws with the camera so much. But I was able to uh, to sand off the ridge from the different the different uh, pieces of the pattern. The, the insert sat up a little bit proud, but I was able to smooth that out. You can see even on the sides, we got no sand stuck in there. No real air bubbles. You flip it around, this, this surface here, if I can try to get it, that surface there is why I think I overheated the metal. I tend to get that that kind of styrofoamy look uh, with with this ZA12 when the metal's overheated. It might also be a tiny bit of shrinkage because that back wall is thicker than the front wall, although it is the same thickness as this part. Otherwise, pretty nice. I didn't bother cleaning up the, the side faces and all that. I just cleaned up this front one. The letters came out nice and clean. That's what I like to see. Although I got to admit, the whole insert and different part thing made it very difficult to put a fillet along this edge, this bottom edge which is why I didn't, which is why it, it looks like there's a little bit of sand tear out. That's something you could probably clean up with like a Dremel. I'm just gonna not bother and move on with my life because it doesn't cause a problem. Cool though, right? Okay, now I have to make another one and then I have to attach them and flatten them or whatever. But I thought this, this loose piece pattern thing was cool enough to get its own episode. And if you've made it this far and you wanna learn how to do all this, I have an online course where I personally teach you to take your 3D printer, yes, FDM and or resin, and learn sand casting in your own shop. It doesn't have to be intimidating or confusing. I take you from nothing, you know, 3D printer, but no metal casting stuff, all the way to finished projects. You learn by doing, it's a lot of fun, and yes, I personally teach you. It's not just a bunch of videos. The current record is two weeks, two weeks from starting with no metal casting stuff to finished projects. The first project, obviously, first of many, 
but like nothing too actual metal casting. Two weeks, two weekends probably, because this dude has like a life and a family. Maybe you can beat his record, I don't know. Anyway, if that interests you, click below. It might even be on sale right now. It is, it is Lunar New Year as this video is being posted. And that's as good an excuse as any, right? Next Gingri video, I will flatten. There's some flattening work. There's attaching it together, and then we move right along. I don't know right off what the next casting is, but that's what we're gonna go for. Now, anyone who tries using this lathe will know exactly who to blame when something goes wrong. I didn't think that through, did I? 